Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin. Thursday, uh, June 29th, uh, around 9 a.m. and I'm heading into work. And it's crazy here with the cops this morning, not exactly sure what's going on, but uh, they aren't allowing cars over to the uh, Penn Station area. They're making them turn off. So it's a little bit crazy here this morning. And on my recent videos where I've been talking about the intersection of SEO and Python, people have definitely stepped forward in the comments and the messages sent directly to me to say more about that, even so far as, you know, teach me how to do SEO. And I thought I'd address that a little this morning and draw that distinction between old school SEO, which still is probably controlling, you know, 50 to 75% of how things work still, and the new movement that seems to be happening in SEO, which is controlling some uh, additional portion with the expectations that it'll gradually shift so that the new way controls everything and the old way will be uh, gradually retired as the new way can pick up the slack and cover for everything the old way was doing. So what is the old way and the, good, and the new way? Well, the big insight that, you know, catapulted Google to the forefront of search engines back in the day when the competitors were InfoSeq and Go and AltaVista was the fact that Google did not just look at on-page content, they looked at the link graph. And they looked at the change of the link graph over time. That is how page A links to page B, the details of that link, what words are used in the anchor text and around the anchor text of the link, and then a very classic, you know, database uh, indexing type operation would kick in where the page is analyzed and all the keywords that should lead to the page are sort of extracted and made part of the Google index for fast lookup when people searched. And the main trick there was, well, on all competitive topics, you are more or less shut out because the way that the link graph works, uh, incumbents, that is pages that have been published for a long time and have been accumulating a lot of links are very hard to displace uh, for those same keywords uh, in Google. So what you would do is you would target uh, easier keyword variations. You would add a third word, for example, to the targeted term. So if it were, you know, blue wood widgets, you would put something like uh, best blue widgets. And for lack of any other page that targeted that exact word arrangement, uh, any better, uh, your page would tend to get served at the top of Google search results, which of course, with that level of uh, predictability, it becomes a rinse and repeat process and the internet gets full of spammy garbage. Old school SEO was good for Google for a while as its AdSense network, you know, became, you know, more and more widespread and you know there was sort of a gold rush or a honeymoon with everyone jumping on the bandwagon to you know both you know manipulate google organic search results to sell their products and to make a bunch of money on running adsense you know uh, advertisements across uh you know content light websites that really didn't deserve to be found in search so you know, I say often back in 2008, Eric Schmidt, the, the then, you know, uh, I guess president of uh, Google, now he's just, I think, on the board or his chairman or something, but Eric Schmidt said in front of a room full of magazine publishers uh, that brand will matter again, that uh, quality will matter. Oh, I'm passing by uh, some road construction. The audio is going to be particularly. Uh, difficult <clears throat> but Eric Schmidt was true to his word and over the following years starting in 2009 all the pandas and penguin updates kicked in 
to start to penalize the search engine spammers. It started out with an update, a little discussed update called Vince, uh, separate from Penguin and Pandas, but Vince gave a selection of brands sort of a safe harbor in search and improved their performance. And ever since 2009 to now, it has been a constant progress of Google slightly tweaking its system so that old school SEO, using the exact word combination you're targeting in the title, headline, uh, URL, and uh, links leading to the page, stopped to be stopped being as effective. And the big change, you know, people seldom talk about it in these exact terms, but what started to happen is Google started to send more traffic to fewer pages. So it was the same overall amount of search traffic being routed and arbitraged by Google. It was just being routed and sent to a smaller number of URLs that for whatever reason Google deems as more relevant and high quality on these topics and if you look at the search results you see all these spammy like sites are starting to fall out so it all comes down to quality and how in the world can an algorithmic an automatic you know process make determinations regarding quality it takes a human right well it does in fact take a human to some degree and it was uh you know, it, it was put into the hands of first the Google uh, web quality team led by Matt Cutts, and that has subsequently evolved now into, I believe, I'm sure that that uh, web quality team is still intact, but now all the sorting and the judgment calls on quality is being done by an army, uh, I guess around 10,000 people, of Google's uh, quality reviewers, evaluators who rate things on a scale uh, about how high how quality they are according to a bunch of different written out criteria in a, in a PDF that Google regularly distributes and leaks. Uh, the last updated one I think being May, it's fairly new. And with each iteration of this uh, document that you know describes how to score quality, they target some additional offender uh, the latest ones being like fake news and uh, bad, you know, <laughs> medical advice and, you know, anything that really people turn to Google on for, tr for, you know, to get the best answer and trust Google, it reflects very poorly on them when these spammers get one over on them by getting their sites into Google search results and, uh, you know, with fake news and bad medical advice, God forbid, making bad decisions with investments or uh, taking care of yourself. So it was really a big deal through the election, of course, with, with the fake news cycle. So there's always some new pressure being put on Google to bring their search results into place. You know, not long ago it was, uh, you know, hate, uh, hateful websites like Holocaust deniers. And uh, it goes back with, you know, different events. Uh, the the world Seer, I guess it was the Super Bowl um, wardrobe malfunction. Uh, each one of these, 9/11. Uh, you know, it's hard to even say these things in the same sentence. But each one of these put tremendous external pressures on Google to evolve and get better. And their latest uh, way to do that is using brand new techniques. I mean, it's still. Like even the old link rank stuff arguably was one brand of machine learning. You were creating sample sets over time, accumulating them up, making ever greater decisions based on your accumulating sample sets and analysis of it. But now keep in mind, Google has the edit by edit history of the internet since it started crawling the web. It has snapshots of what you know the web looked like at different stages in its progression. And you can see new large website players come onto the scene, publish, spin out pages, clean up their sites. You know, the whole history is there in Google's eyes. So they can retroactively go back and reapply their new techniques. You know, it's the keyword, it's machine learning and AI, but it is absolutely true. Uh, do some research about TensorFlow. 
take note of the fact that Google took everything that was important about doing large TensorFlow tasks, which includes facial recognition, any sort of pattern recognition, all the things necessary to make quality evaluations on web content and put it in its own custom hardware. They made a Tensor processing unit, a TPU, that looks like a little Raspberry Pi. It's very small and they can be lined up in racks in say like a co-location center and your ability then to do uh, the kinds of tasks uh, Google needs to do to get good results out of a uh, machine learning process to determine quality is is doable right the doability of all this uh, is now what's different what's happening uh, greater processing power uh, better software libraries so this this tiny percent now that's being controlled by this new process uh, does not have quite the same cause effect uh, correlations that are easy to spot as old school SEO where most people could tell you you know title tags are amazingly important uh, the details surrounding the links to the page uh, from other pages very important and the rest of it is uh, oftentimes hotly debated there's structured data there's so many things that play in Google oftentimes throws around the number of 200 criteria uh, that are looked at but this you know 201st criteria the fact that and I'm being you know figurative don't take it as it's exactly the the 201st you know thing but you know this machine learning and tensorflow stuff gives a second opinion it gives a, a completely uh, more sophisticated and and smart and intelligent view of you know which pages should be rewarded for their quality which they can go back and apply from the beginning of time. But all these changes are entirely too fast um, and too uh, blunt uh, for Google's liking. They like to change search results by one or two percent uh, per change. So they have all these throttle levels and they run tests and sometimes the tests go out to different sample groups. And once they like the results of the test, they adjust the the weighting or the throttle level by which that that factor you know can alter search results and then they make it a permanent part of the you know I guess you say Google index still going forward um, and so what do you do what's the connection between Python and SEO well it mostly comes down to looking for correlations you know everyone says correlation does not mean causation but if you can get strong correlations, strong multiple correlations, you have a pretty good idea that these things are interrelated. And even if it's not causation, you can make smarter decisions about how to publish, when, why, and what does Python do? Well, Python, together with Jupyter Notebook and the whole Anaconda install, is a perfect way to have all the tools necessary to pull from this data source and that data source. It used to be you had these very super effective closed loop data sources that you could almost auto optimize your site with. That would be the referrer variable coming in from Google search before the not provided event occurred where Google stopped telling you the keywords that was leading to your site. But then they started giving it back to you through Google search console, uh, previously webmaster tools. So you know one of the places you connect to is search console and you can connect to GA and you can connect to all kinds of different data sources pull it down and then start treating it as if it were all in one database under pandas in Python so you can do joins and queries and handle it all as if it were in a SQL database without ever even installing real database software on your local machine and do pivot tables right inside of uh, pandas in order to get trending and use uh, the Boca visualization tool which is the Python equivalent to the d3.js library uh, to do interactive visualizations um, and then eventually apply different uh, you know data models to uh, 
to the data to try and make some predictions, some predictive analytics uh, calls. Like you should publish on the following topic. You should, uh, you know, promote it heavily because it's a difficult topic to punch in on, or you don't need to promote it much. It's space you can just walk in on because there seems to be low difficulty, not many strong competitors there, but with high search volume. So a lot of it is gap analysis and striking distance and all the tiny moves that you can make to incrementally improve the performance of your site. The same incremental performance that used to be possible before not provided occurred and you could sort of almost auto-optimize your site. That's why I made Hittail still around today. Uh, it didn't auto-optimize your site, but it issued uh, writing topic suggestions that if you took and wrote on in a search optimized platform like blogging software, you'd be pretty sure to walk into the first page of results. And of course, that was old school SEO, uh, still effective, but gradually winding down. New school SEO is just a whole nother iteration of figuring out what's going on and sort of a standing outside the black box sense with nothing but search results being your black box that you can probe, which isn't very nice uh, right now because you have to run a lot of searches against Google to get a lot of, to get enough data back. Of course, you can look at your own data without those same, uh, you know, potential pen penalties. You can pull down all your search console and Google Analytics data. Um, but there you pretty much have it. And next generation SEO is data science. It is predictive analytics. You know, it is machine learning. Fill in your buzz term but you know, the processes by which these yes, no, quality, not quality determinations are made are by feeding it into a machine learning process, that URL probably getting rated by the quality you know, uh, evaluator team, uh, being by virtue of that rating, it gets sorted into a, uh, a group, a training group, and any page that matches the URLs that are in that training group in the profile, the link profile, and a whole bunch of other stuff, it's not just on-page criteria, will likewise be rewarded as high quality or penalized as, as low quality. So this is what I'm doing these days. I'm getting my legs with Python and Pandas and Panda SQL and connecting to any alt data source and to deal with every authentication uh, system to, uh, to connect. And, to do things sometimes ad hoc and then sometimes to promote it to an automatic scheduled uh, process. And uh, yeah, it's pretty technical. It's not the whole field of SEO, but technical SEO is where I'm specializing and it's very interesting, very rewarding and aligns with a huge movement in the industry, which has sort of evergreen protection from, uh, from obsolescence, which is analyzing data. So thanks for joining me, hope to talk to you soon, and don't forget to subscribe.